So in the pre-internet days, how did you communicate with your mom, right? Phone calls at home. How did your mom tell you that someone needed to pick up milk? Write a list, a lists, write a letter. How did you uh, plan a vacation? You went to a travel agent. You got in your car, you drove to the travel agent and you spent a few hours there. How did you do your taxes? You went to H&R Block. You took all of your W-2s and you went to H&R Block. How did you order pizza? You called the pizza place. How did you do your accounting? You did it on a ledger. How did you add a new server? You bought one. How did you research cars? You drove to every dealer. How did you entertain yourselves on the weekend? Went to the video store. These are all the things that we did in the pre-internet days. In our personal lives. What do we do today? How do we talk to our mom? We text, we Skype, we email, DM. Uh, how do we communicate that your mom needs you to pick up uh, milk? Or needs someone to pick up milk? We do a uh, family chat, right? Or the fridge tells us. How do you communicate with people? Email, Facebook, forums. How do you find your friends online? How do you book travel? Do you ever talk to somebody? Who does your taxes? Online. When you order a pizza? Online. You use uh, QuickBooks? Online. Blockchain. Yeah, blockchain. When you buy a server, go to Vulture, go to AWS, spin one up in five minutes. How do you buy a car? Research online. I just put a, um, I just put a deposit down on a, um, that new electric pickup truck that was a Kickstarter. It comes out in 2020 and I never spoke to a single person. When I put the deposit down on my Tesla, same thing. Why is Tesla even in business? Because the major dealers no longer control all the information. How do we entertain ourselves? Netflix. YouTube. Okay, that's, that's what the internet did for us in our personal lives, okay? There is a similar transformation that needs to take place within manufacturing facilities. This is the digital transformation of our personal lives. Our cell phones, my iPhone X here, is thousands of times more powerful than the computer that landed man on the moon. This is an extension of who I am. We are already cyborgs. I have all of human knowledge at my fingertips on this phone. So that was the digital transformation of our personal lives. So let's talk about how we used to do things. When you, uh, when you go to a website, how do you access the information on that website? Does the proprietor have to give you special access so that you can go to Airbnb and book uh, a room in someone else's house and without ever talking to anyone? How do you access it? The That's right, you just plug in. You go into that namespace. You just plug into the namespace. Exactly, thank you. You go to airbnb.com. Is that a special uh, domain? Is it unique? If you go to airbnb.com, is there any chance you're going to run into somebody else's information? No, you're not. And it's perfectly secure. You just go to the namespace, okay? What happens if you don't know where it is located in the namespace? What do you do? Search. You go to Google. You do a Google search. So that's really important. We do a Google search. Okay, let's talk about industry. In the pre-internet days, how did manufacturing facilities communicate with each other? How did they communicate? Clipboards. Clipboards, stack lights, memos, telecoms. How did, uh, how did many people share information in, in a plant, meetings. in meetings? Conference room meetings. In the pre-internet days, how did you start a work order on a piece of equipment? How did you know what you were supposed to run in the pre-internet days? You go to a, like a schedule board. You go to a schedule board, right? How did you start the machine? Push a button. How did you get your raw material? How did the material handler know that you needed new raw material to run your piece of machinery? Phone calls, bells. How did you find out about how the plant is running. How do the decision makers know how things are running in the pre-internet days? They get daily reports. In the pre-internet days, what, is the, uh, what was the most um, powerful piece of software that anyone used in the pre-internet days? It was a spreadsheet. It was Excel, exactly. Okay? All right. Make it interesting. So, it, what, in the, in the post-internet day, in the post-internet days, what is the number one form of communication in a plant? It is probably email. You email each other. Maybe a little bit of SMS. How do you communicate 
We're talking about the typical plant, the typical plant today. How does the typical plant communicate a problem from the floor to someone else? An and on board maybe? And on board. Notifications. How do you communicate problems from the machine from operator to operator? It would be digital comments in the MES system, right? That's how you'll do it in post-internet days. How do I notify a, uh, a mechanic that I've got a problem with my, my machine? I am going to go to a web page and open a work order, a maintenance work order, or my machine's gonna do it for me. How do we share information? In the post-internet days, how do we share information from lots of people? Slack. We use Slack. Zoom. Slack, Zoom. So this is where companies like Flow Software would come in. The strength of Flow Software, right? Flow natively integrates with Slack and it connects to your equipment on the floor. So you can take Flow Software, you can draw data out of your equipment and you can share reports in a Slack channel instead of going into a conference room and having a meeting about yesterday's data. How do you handle your schedule in the post-internet days? It's all digital, it's real time, and it's based on a predictive engine. Uh, how do you start your equipment? It does it automatically. That's right. Either from a control room, from MES, from SCADA, or automated. Do you make any phone calls on the post-internet day? No more bells. Reports. This is the big thing. Real-time reporting. That's what OEE is. OEE is telling you how you are performing right now on this shift with this work order since 6 a.m., 7 a.m., midnight. The other thing about real-time reports is it can automatically update our schedule. We can predict when you're going to finish this work order based on how we've been running today. So this is the digital transformation of in industry. This is 4.0. The digital transformation. This is not connected. This is not connected enterprise. Why? And the answer is, with the connected enterprise, with the unified stacks of some manufacturers, you have to have a special key, you gotta have a special piece of software, you have to have something special to get to your information, okay? The idea with digital transformation in Industry 4.0 is that I can access the information I need just by someone sharing me the place in the namespace I need to go get it. Like the internet. Like the internet, exactly. That is, digital transformation for industry. That is industry 4.0. And now here's the crazy thing. In the previous chart, or in the previous, uh, when I, before I wiped the board, let's see, let's, let, this is our progress in the digital transformation of uh, personal and industry. This is our progress bar. How far are mo have most people progressed in, dig in the personal digital transformation? Do you know anyone who doesn't use the internet at all? That's 90% plus, I mean, 95%, 99%. Do you, do you know anyone who doesn't have own a cell phone? Do you know anyone who doesn't own a cell phone? Do you know anyone who doesn't have a computer at home? Do you know anyone who doesn't have any smart devices at all? Let's be conservative and say we're 90% of the way there. 90% of the people we know in Western civilization have progressed. What do you think that number is for industry? How many plants have performed this move? that you know of? 5%? I think you're being generous. But we're gonna be, we're gonna be generous. We're gonna say that industry is 10% of the way there. And that's a generous assessment. Now we've already made the argument, the compelling argument, of why it is this stuff matters. The question is, why is it industry hasn't gone from the pre-internet days to the post-internet days. What's the reason? Industry is slow to change, bureaucracy. They don't know how. They don't know how. You won't be able to find a single plant, a single organization that says, we don't need to do this. The answer is, how? The answer is, they don't know how. How do they do it? Solutions. That's right. They have to find experts to help them do it. The, when, we, when we talked about with the stack earlier, 
What's the problem? The reason it's slow is most integrators only work, they specialize in a layer of the stack. So when they're ready to digitally transform, they go to the integrator they've been working with. But the integrator that they've been working with isn't familiar with the entire stack. They don't know how to integrate digital, all the way up. A digital systems integrator. That's right. A digital systems integrator. How about a 4.0 systems integrator? Um, oh, only tool you have is a hammer. Every problem becomes a nail. Right? That's right. That's right, exactly. I, I love that analogy, by the way. <laughs> if, if, if uh, yeah, that's right. If, if the only tool you have is a hammer, then every problem becomes a nail. That's right. Everyone knows that they need that this this transformation needs to take place. Everyone knows. The OEMs know. The end users know, and the integrators know. We all know. There are just very few who know how. That's the problem. That's the reason it's been so slow. It's not that pe people are motivated. They just don't know how to do it yet. And that's where Intellic comes in. That's where 4.0 Solutions comes in. That's where Flow Software comes in. That's where Canary Labs comes in. That's where Easy Automation comes in. That's where Bedrock Automation comes in. That's where Hirschman, that's where Opto22, Inductive Automation, uh, Factory Studio, and Tatsoft. That's where all these different companies, Tossy Box, uh, Red Lion, that all that's where these companies come in and even and even within that group there is a there's a hierarchy of knowledge there's specialized knowledge so just like we're building a, a digital ecosystem for plants there is also a, a an organizational ecosystem for doing the digital transformation so anyway that's it man we're done